Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So we're at that point in October where we're at the midpoint. So it's time for a mid-month mini mission inspiration for our Facebook group. And this month, the randomised machine that Ian built us has chosen the letter Q. So let me turn over to my overhead camera and show you what I'm going to create today. So, as I've just shown you, these are the words beginning with the letter Q that we've got for the month of October. So, Queen, Question, Quantity, Quarters and Quiz. So, I'm going to go for the word Question for my at tag, which is what I normally do for the mid-month mini mission inspiration. So this is my um, tag journal for 2020 um, and I'm all ready to get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spin that round so I can take the front cover off, which is a clear piece of um, Perspex or acrylic, because I'm going to use that for my template for my tag base and all I'm going to do is just to draw around it like so and I know what you're thinking you're thinking you're putting that right in the middle of the piece of cardboard why don't you just do it so you can get two out of it well I can't believe it or not um, it's not big enough that way <laughs> And it's not big enough that way to get another one in as well. It's only a piece of cardboard from some dog biscuits. Uh, a piece of cardboard just from the packaging from the dog biscuits. I've tried before to be able to get two out. I just can't do it. Um, so just grab a little cutting mat. Because I don't want to damage my brand new blue one. I don't know whether you've noticed that one. And a straight edge. Oh, which I've left behind me. There you go. And all I'm going to do is just to follow those lines and then just cut out the tag just using a craft knife or in my case a surgical scalpel which is my preferred cutting method. There we go. So a couple of firm strokes should see us through. And this is as easy as it is. And if you've not seen my tag journal before, it is just made up of tags that I've made. And they are quite simple size. They're 8 inches height by 4 inches wide. So really, really simple. All you have to do is to cut out, if you want to make your own, cut out some card 8 by 4 and then just choose the angle, if you like, of your, of your tag edges. Um, mine were predetermined because of the acetate cover, which when I originally got the tag journal, or the first tag journal, it was made up of pieces of um, like mount board with acetate covers. I've since eked that out into three different tag journals. So this is tag journal number three. So now I'm creating my own tags whenever I need them. So there we go for that one. Now, the other thing that I just need to do is just turn it over. See, it's just slightly bigger, but that's okay. That's probably because I've cut on the outside of the, um, of the line. I'll just take that up, actually. And then just draw in that circle there so I know where the hole's going to be. Maybe just take a little bit more off the bottom. Just to make it fit a little bit better. just there and if I want to trim the sides down a little bit that would make my little adjustments later on okay so there's my tag that's pretty much the right shape now so I'm happy with that okay so we're going for the word question don't really need that cutting mat just yet so what I want to do is to create a bit of an abstracted background um, and I'm going to go paint, start painting directly onto this. Um, but I'm not going to gesso first. I'm going to let the paint just sit as it wants to. Um, just pretty much for 
experimental process for doing it. Let's see if I'm making myself clear, which I probably am. I'm not going to gesso, I'm just going to work directly on top because I've not done it before and I want to see what happens, see whether it alters the colour or not, which it probably will do a little bit. Um, Indian turquoise, there we go. So we'll start off with Indian turquoise, I'll put some on my craft mat there and I'm going to use a brayer, which I've forgotten to pick up. Always forgetting to pick at least one item up and just rubbish that way. Put the um, scalpel away. I don't want to stab myself, and my printer has decided it's going to wake itself up. Have you finished? When you're ready. <laughs> right, so I'm going to pick up some paint just off there. And then I'm just going to drag it across. I like the fact that it's not going to be a white background. So I'm working already with two colours. So we've got that nice brown of the craft card, which is cool. but also we've got that nice turquoisey blue. And because we're working directly onto the cardboard, it's gonna soak in really, really quickly, which is going to allow the paint to dry really, really quickly. So that's no, already. And I've not done anything, I've got the heat gun out on it. And I'm not going to clean the brayer either, just yet. So we've got that kind of nice blue there. I want to add in a few more darker shades. So let's move up one step from that turquoise blue to the peacock teal. I'm using Deco Art Americana paints because that's what I've got the most colours in at the moment. Until I never closed that properly last time I used it. Just put that scuzz up there. All right, so again, put a little bit of a blob down. Get the same brayer. And this time I'm going to work top to bottom. Look at that colour, isn't that beautiful? Loving it. When people have asked what my favourite colour is in the past, I've always kind of fluctuated between greens and teals. Um, but I think these kind of like turquoise tealy colours have always had a, a kind of special place for me. Um, it's not a question of what's my favourite colour because I do like a lot of colours. But I can tell you which ones I don't like. <laughs> I'm not a fan of purple at all. And those of you that have been following me for a few years will know that. Okay, so we've got that darker colour down now. So again... That's going to take just a little bit longer to dry now because we've got that first coat on it that's now creating a barrier. So the second coat is going to just take a little bit longer to dry, but we can encourage it. Which doesn't take long at all. Okay, so um, that's dry. I forgot my train of thought because somebody knocked on the door. The postman's just been. <laughs> it's kind of... Throw me for six. Anyway, so white next. He says, dropping bits everywhere. I should really clean these, shouldn't I, more often? But hey ho. Okay, so white. Let's add some of that down. Lid. And then do the same thing again. I think brayers are pretty much of a underused tool. We should use them a lot more often because you can get some really really great paint effects now as you can see I'm going over the top of this now and it's picking up the ridges from the previous colors that we had underneath it so we've got that darker turquoise on top which has got the ridges in it and this is creating a real nice kind of weathered almost like a weathered wood effect 
which I think is absolutely brilliant. So, and that's just being created with paint effect, not by any other kind of texture. So again, that will take a few seconds just to dry off. So I'll give that a little bit of encouragement. Okay, so we've got the lighter blue, the darker blue, and then the white. So I want to bring that lighter blue back again a little bit. So just grab a tiny amount of that Indian turquoise again. Just a couple of blobs should do it. And then grab the roller. The roller. Tell I've been decorating recently, can't you? The brayer. And then we can just lightly come back in. Now, the white has kind of dulled down a little bit, which is fine. There we go. So we've still got that nice kind of, let's get some of that little blue kind of like in the middle. But I'm not particularly worried about that. So again, we'll go back with that darker peacock teal again. And I'm not even going to bother drying it this time. So I'm just going to add one blob. Or two blobs maybe. You see how it's starting just to mix a little bit. I'm just building up the layers. Perfect. Okay. I'll just let that dry. Or maybe give it a little bit of encouragement. And Ian's just come back from doing an errand. Hiya! It's okay. Did you have a good trip, trip, Ian? I did, thank you, yes. I went to the bakery and got some donuts, but no mozzarella cheese. <laughs> Sounds like a really weird combination. It was a very good combination. We're making our own pizza tonight. Well, it's a we? tart, isn't it, really? A puff pastry tart. Yes, with a puff pastry base. So, We'll keep you posted on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I want to do now is just... Um, I'm, I think I'm done with that front part. So, I now want to add... Um, say front part. I'm not going to add any more blue layers onto it. So what I want to do now is I will just give the brayer a quick wipe over just to get rid of any, well not necessarily get rid of, but just to remove any excess blue because I'm going to change colour group. So we're going to go from the cools into the warms next. So I'll tell you what, let me get this cleaned off as much as I possibly can or want to without putting in too much effort <laughs> and then I will be back okay so we're all dry and ready to apply the next bit of detail or layer onto the tag so this time I'm going to go with a deco art Americana bright yellow so like I said we're going from the cool tones into the warm tones now so I want to add a little bit of that yellow paint onto my craft mat. Pick up the brayer. This time I'm going to bring in this foam stamp. Now this yellow, oh, it was a bit rubbish. Um, this yellow is probably a little bit more translucent than it is opaque. So I'm expecting this, when it goes down, to turn um, the blue a bit greeny, but that's okay. So it's a bit slippery, as we say here in the UK, it's a bit of a slippery bugger. Okay, so I'm going to turn that over and then I'm going to go top left, give it a push. And then lift. There we go. And then I'm going to do it again. Swizz it round. I kind of like these foam stamps. I wish I'd bought more when I saw them. But I think if I remember, this was probably the only one that I actually liked pattern wise because it's a bit sunshiny. But in this instance, because we've got that kind of um, circle with the, the spikes on it, it's going to work quite well as a kind of abstracty 
um, representation of the world we find ourselves living in at the moment. And we'll do one more, this time just in that corner. I'm going to overlap it just a little bit. There we go. Perfect. I am liking that. Okay, so I'm going to get that dried off, this cleaned up, and then I'll be back when we're ready for the next layer. Okay, so that's now dry. So where you can see it's gone over the darker colours and the blue, it's turned a little bit green, but where it's gone over the white that we put down with the brayer, it's stayed kind of yellowy, which is nice. I like the fact that we're getting that little bit of variation. Okay, so I'm going to do one more layer, do the same thing again. This time I'm going to use the Americana True Red. So I'll put some of that down onto there. Grab the sponge or foamy. And then we'll just pick up some of that red. Now, I can't remember whether this one is a an opaque or a translucent. It's been a while since I've used the red. So we will see. I've got a funny feeling it's probably going to be a little bit translucent. Okay, so I think actually it could do a tad more. It's kind of blobbing a little bit, which is unexpected, but that's fine. It's not something we can't work with. <laughs> when I say blobbing, I mean pooling. Okay, so I'm going to put this one now right over that side. So it overlaps the first ones that we did. that fabulous and then just using what we've got left here we'll quickly go over and then we'll do one just overlapping there and then again just grab what's left and then we'll do one there Love it, love it, love it. Right, we'll get that dried off, cleaned up, and I'll be right back. That was kind of a posh English accent, wasn't it? So my tag is now dry. You can see those lovely colours coming through. You can see the yellows. You've got that nice kind of motley background, um, which I think looks rather nice. So, oh, and I've also popped in the hole for um, to attach it to the tag journal when it's done. The reason I've done it now is because I want to add a back in. So I've gone through my um, old papers and I found this nice sheet um, of blues and greens with a hint of colour in there. Now this is an old um, a sheet from an old K and Co pad, um, which I've had for absolute ever. Um, I think I bought this as part of a a pack when we first went to the States years and years ago um, and then since that time somebody sent me another one identical to the one we had in Happy Mail. So after I'd run out or used up the first one or actually I've got a funny feeling mum pinched it but that's okay don't mind if mum pinches it. So now I've got some sticky on the back of the sheet. It's single sided. It's not a double sided pad, as you can see. So grab the tag. Now let's just see, let's pop that about there. I like to cover the backs. Just makes them feel a bit more finished. So that's how strong that adhesive is. It's pulling the paint off my fingers. 
one way to clean your fingertips. Who needs soap? Right. Just trim that out. See that Ian just come back in again. Look, we've seen the adhesive, it's pulled the paint off my fingers. Excellent. Because you don't really need soap now, do you? Could I throw a cat burglar? Well that that would be good if it was taking your fingerprints off. The mess does this thing. Yes, bleach does remove your fingerprints. That's right. So if you're wanting to do burglary as a career. Maybe a second career. Wash your hands in bleach first. A second career, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a bit tacky, isn't it? Tacky as in sticky. Not tacky as in not very nice. And then the final bit, and I can repunch the ool again. I could of course just paint the back, but where's the fun in that? <laughs> it's funny, I've always used um, papers rather than paint, I think. Nine times out of ten. There we go. Do you like an eyelet for it? No, thank you very much. If I use an eyelet for it, it will restrict the size of the, the ring that you can put through it. So, thank you for the offer. Okay. Right, okay, so to finish off then, um, because the focal point for this tag is the actual word question, or the actual question itself, that's what takes priority. That's the main focal, not the background, but the main focal for this tag is the actual question itself. So what I've done is I've printed out on my computer just the question, when will this madness end? We've got that kind of stamp which has that almost abstracted COVID thing in the background which is going to work really well. It's a nice sunburst but works well as a, a kind of virus -y thing too. So what I'm going to do is I've printed it out. <clears throat> I'm just going to cut out the words just leaving a little bit of a, a white gap around each one and then we'll just trim off the sides because I don't want them all to be even. I did do a little bit of it and I thought well hang on I shall just show you the rest. Trimmed it out of the card that is. but only as far as the word madness goes. And then I'll just trim off a little bit more under the word end. Okay. So I'll just grab some scissors and then snip. I'm not too bothered about getting the lines straight because I like it when they're not perfect. So that probably doesn't need much taking off. So follow the line. Kind of mid mod with those kind of angled edges. So I'll move that to one side and then we're ready to stick. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to stick on the coin which I've got on the back of all of my tags for this year so I know and can remember what the prompt letter was. So we'll stick that about there. And just because I can, <laughs> gets it flat. You tell I've been wallpapering recently, can't you? Okay, so what I also want to do, just before I stick those down, I just want to distress the edge 
a little bit um, of those but I want to use a red colour so I've got the brand new distressing crackling campfire so this is the first time it's ever been used it's kind of a tomatoey red I think I said it was a campfire colour, it's more tomato red but it adds a nice edge to things I bought the ordinary distressing because I'm not all that keen on the oxides as you will know if you've been watching my channel for any length of time not a fan of the oxides at all and this just helps to tie your focal point which is the words in with the colours in your background so let's just grab some glue and hope there's enough left in this pen which there should be and let's start it over on the left only because we start reading from the left well kind of discombobulates the eye if you start a sentence over there to work down and it's all about flow getting your eye to flow across your composition which is why it's good to put things in threes visual triangles Bring that down a little bit. And the last one. go and I think that's me done that's my mid-month mini mission inspiration for the month of October using the keyword question when will this madness end which is a question we're all asking ourselves more than once or more often just recently okay so here's my tag journal so now that that's done I can pop that in with its friend into the journal so I hope you've enjoyed watching me create that art tag if you have please remember to give the video a thumbs up share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video that's all from me for now I'll see you all again very very soon but I may just distress the edges too so if I have a look in the photos see you all again soon bye for now I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.